I've made some suggestions for palettes uh, in the um, supply list. Uh, this is the one that I use pretty much all the time. This is a John Pike palette. Uh, it has a lid that pops away. You're left with your palette. See that I have a very large mixing area. That's what's going to be important for class. If you want to use something that's smaller, uh, I suggest using something similar to this. Um, this is sort of a it wouldn't really be considered a travel palette. It's a little bit large for that, but it is much smaller as you can see, and it folds away, but you still have lots of area to mix color, okay? So that's going to be very important for you. Uh, whether you're traveling by air or you're driving, make sure that you take your tubes and you go ahead and you squeeze your colors out into these little compartments. Do this several days before you travel because the colors, once they squeeze into the compartments, they will dry and harden, and you want that. You don't want these moving around, especially when you're traveling. Put all your warm colors on one side and then all your cooler colors on the other side. That's kind of a, a good starting point because laying out your palette colors is kind of a, it's just a preference, a personal type of thing that you develop over time as you're working. But separating warm colors and cool colors is a, is a good starting place. Uh, use a Sharpie to just indicate the name of your colors, you know, on, uh, on the sides all the way around. Uh, once the colors are in and they dry, uh, especially your blue colors, uh, your cooler colors, they can all sort of look a little bit the same. So this helps to ensure that you remember where everything is. And if you do decide to change out a color at some point, rubbing alcohol will just rub this um, away and you can relabel at some point in the future. But it does help you keep things straight while you're working.